methods are not new. We have been prophesying various permutations, signs, scatter um, profiles for LD identification and cognitive tests going all the way back to the 60s. Uh, <laughs> do I have anybody still around that remembers the banatine profile, the acid profile, the SCAD profile? I see a lot of the young kids looking around going, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> These are all subtest configurations on the Wechsler scales that were, they were uh, prophesized as indicating a person had LD. So acid, arithmetic, coding, information, and digit span. If you had low scores on those subtests relative to other subtests, that was taken as a potential diagnostic indicator of LD. A lot of these come from intelligent testing, from Kaufman, okay? So pretty much every diagnostic utility study that's looked at all these patterns has found that they discriminate LD at chance levels, okay? There's too many kids that have those weird profiles that also don't have academic problems. Ergo, there is error in, in our measurement, and we cannot use it as a valid sign at the level of the individual. Okay? So basically, this is around the mid-90s when kind of all this stuff kind of comes to a head, and basically every one of these patterns and profiles was basically dismissed. It's like, can't use it validly to diagnose LD. Okay? So let's understand, we're going to talk about diagnostic utility a little bit here. Okay? To me, this is the brass tacks, right? I could do a factor analysis, but what all I care about as a practitioner is, can I use this sign at the level of the individual with the kid when I see it and conclude they have the thing? That's what, it, that's what it comes down to. Group studies are singularly insufficient. We see weird patterns in group studies between LD and non-LD kids. But that doesn't mean I could use that weird pattern at the level of the individual. I have to do additional step, and that's diagnostic utility. Okay, so when we make a decision, we can decide to cast a wide net. I want to capture as many of the kids as possible. We have to understand that when we do that, we talked about air. There's always a decision that has to be made. Where am I going to cut the line? What type of air am I going to find acceptable? I, there's, no, there's nothing that's going to be perfect here. So when I cast, so first of all, we understand when we're identifying SLD, we got LD, in normal kids, there's going to be a lot of overlap between those groups. And I can minimize or extend that overlap depending on where I put the decision-making threshold. Okay? So if I cast a wide net, I want to get every kid that has potentially LD. Right? I'm going to get a bunch of kids. But I'm also going to, ca I'm going to capture all the kids that probably have LD, but I'm also going to capture a lot of kids that don't. So I'm going to have a lot of false positives. On the other hand, we can be really, really conservative. I don't want to be wrong with my positive test at all. So I make it very, very conservative. And so I'm going to capture far less of the LD kids relative to the total population. But most of my decisions are going to be right. Does that make sense? So somewhere on this continuum, we have to balance. And so when we think about methods, we want to have this information beforehand so we can make that decision. So does scatter matter? I looked at scatter for the KBC2, highest, lowest score, because they say 23 points, and you know that's significant. You should invalidate the FSIQ. It could be an indicator of LD. When we do diagnostic utility stats, we can plot. So I talked about before sensitivity versus um, specificity. That's really just talking about true positives versus false negatives versus true negatives versus, uh, or excuse me, false negatives. And what these rock curves do is they plot that. And this diagonal line right here, I love rock analogies. They're so easy to understand. The diagonal line is chance. That's me flipping a coin, me using the magic eight ball. So obviously, we want our, di our rock curve for our diagnostic sign to have as much area under the curve as possible to depart from chance. That tells us how accurate we are as a result of doing that assessment. This is if you use scatter analyses to account for LD. Okay, And this is important because it's a fundamental assumption of PSW, right? These kids have these elevations and scatter in their profile. They're weird. Basically, chance. At some levels, you would be more accurate if you actually used a coin. 